there was a time when gods walked the earth, when warriors were heroes, their battles and conquests became legend, and the legend lives on. This is the Owl of the Gladiators. Challenges climb the pyramid, run the gauntlet, Jewel 90 style, and slam the Powerball. And now the hosts of television's hottest hour of gladiatorial conquest, Kimberly Joseph and Aaron Pedersen. Good evening and welcome to another exciting night with our champions. Our challengers tonight want to claim their right to compete in the contest and share in the prizes. Our challengers will be put through their paces by our team of muscle men and muscle women. But first, please welcome to the stage the all-powerful Gladiators. Gladiators. And here they are. Taipan, Fury, Vulcan, Blade, Tower, Storm, Hammer, Rebel, Cougar, Cheetah, Condor, Delta, and Flame. Our two female challengers this evening are Tanya Logan and Donna Suter. Tanya is 27 and single. She's 5 foot 8, an aerobics instructor and personal trainer from Sydney. Tanya has a fetish for action movies. Donna's from New South Wales. She's 30 and single. She's represented her state in hockey and swimming, and at 5 foot 2, Donna says her biggest weakness is her height. Please welcome Donna and Tanya. You looking forward to those contact jewels? Yeah, I enjoy the contact sports the most um, because of the strength that I have and I'm looking forward to battle against Flame in duel, so that'll be interesting. Well, that will be an interesting contest. You're about the same height and probably the same weight and build. Now, you've got a problem with height. You said that's your weakness. <laughs> but then small people are quick and fast. That's right. Um, the Eliminator is what I'm looking forward to because of that. Yeah, I might get knocked off the duel, but <laughs> I'll just um, try and hang in there. Good luck in Gladiators, ladies. And our two male challengers tonight are Andrew Strickland and Rhett Foreman. Andrew is 26. He's single and lives in New South Wales. Andrew's a six foot two maintenance manager who loves all sports, especially running and swimming. Rhett's also single. He's 21, an apprentice carpenter from Queensland. At six foot tall, Rhett's into indoor volleyball and surf lifesaving. Please welcome to centre stage, Andrew and Rhett. Andrew, you're a maintenance manager, obviously a very fit one. Yes, it's a very physical job. I'm usually on my feet all day. Now, are there any games that you're particularly looking forward to? Well, I've got a background in Australian rules football, so uh, I think the gauntlet and the pyramid are my, my game. Rhett, you're an apprentice carpenter. Now, you also play a lot of rugby, so you're obviously uh, ready for the contact sports as well. Yeah, I played a bit at school, uh, but I've been playing into volleyball since, so I'm um, looking to finish them on piece. Well, all the best for this evening, and we'll look forward to seeing some action on the pyramid, your first game. seconds to get to the top. The first to hit the button gets 10 points. Would you please welcome to the base of the pyramid, Tanya and Donna. And at the top of the mountain are our two gladiators, Blade and Delta. Climb every mountain. I'll have none of that. To start the pyramid and all our events tonight, our referee, John Alexander. Challengers. Ready! Well, here we go for the first Ready event of this evening, the Women's Ready. Pyramid. It's the last of the Eliminator Heats before the quarterfinals start Three, next week. Two, one. Let's match them up. On the left, we've got Tanya and Delta. Tanya's got an eight kilo advantage over Delta. It doesn't matter in this case as Delta brings her all the way down. 
Blade's got the exact opposite. She's got 10 kilos on Donna, and she's not going to have any problems trying to bring Donna down because weight really does help in the pyramid event. It's all a matter of tactics. Cat and mouse a little bit also. If you can get around the gladiator and maybe even duck as they dive on top of you, you've got a chance to get up and push that button. So let's have a look here at Blade and Donna. Donna trying to get around Blade, but Delta puts another great tackle on Tanya. Donna gets thrown down to the bottom also, and there's not much time left now for our challengers to get to the top. Tanya working out a little bit of a break now, but Delta right on top of it. She throws Tanya down once more. Donna pushed off there by Blade, and time really running out now for the challengers. I don't think there's going to be much left. Tanya's still trying to get around Delta. She goes to the right. Delta's right there. Blade also waiting for Donna. And time's up, folks. No points for the women. The first of our replays showed that it really is a wrestling match up there, and you can see Delta using Tanya's weight advantage to bring Tanya down to the floor. And once again, Delta grabs Tanya and brings her right down. Yep, there she goes. Donna, what a climb. <laughs> it was really hard. I just didn't want to get thrown down. <laughs> so I kept pushing to the top. Right, but the pyramids are pretty comfortable. They don't hurt too much. Oh, well, speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm a bit little of a new. How about you, Tanya? You're out of breath. Very, very exhausting. The lactic acid was building up in my legs and I was just so tired. So even if you'd thrown one of the gladiators down, it would have been hard getting to the top anyway. Yeah, I copped a beating in my left quad muscle, though. She heard me go, ow. Our gladiators are going to be hard to beat tonight. Both challengers have yet to score. Andrew and Rhett have been warming up watching the games, but now it's their turn to tackle the pyramid. But our gladiators are certainly not going to give them any ground, not Vulcan or the Colossal Condor. Come on. Come on. Pyramid, the top of the peak. The Condor has landed. Challengers! Ready. You saw there Vulcan. He's just waiting for these guys to come to the top Ready. of the pyramid. Let's see how he goes. Three, two, one. Red and Condor on the left. Vulcan and Andrew on the right. This is going to be a great matchup. Andrew's trying to get around Vulcan. Vulcan's got a good hold of him, throws him down, and let's go. Oh, Andrew's got loose. He'll get to the top and get the 10 points. Yes. What a great time, 15 seconds. Absolutely fantastic there by Andrew to get past Vulcan and give Vulcan some of his own back. Now we're going to concentrate on Rick and Condor. Can Rick get up the top and get the remaining five points? Condor throws him down. Rick's going to have to show some good tactics here because Condor thinks he's the king of the mountain and maybe he might be. We'll soon find out. Condor's got a good hold of Rhett, pushes him down. Rhett jumps off, waiting to come back up. Cat and Mouse needed here by Rhett. He's going to have to go left and hope that Condor goes right. There goes the arm. Condor fakes the movement. Rhett tried to get up. Condor's not going to give him any latitude. A big throw, loses his shoe, and time's about to run out. Fantastic work there by Andrew. He got the 10 points. If you wanted a good start, this is the way to do it. Look at Vulcan tackling Andrew. He just slips there and lets him go. Andrew's able to run all the way up to the top, push the button and get the 10 points. Well done. Did you think you could do it? Oh, I had a, I had a thought in my mind I could do it. I pumped myself up for this event. I had Vulcan, I looked on the sheet and I had Vulcan. I said, oh, how am I going to get past this guy? But uh, I went straight to the top and he just slipped off me. The weight advantage for Condor proved to be invaluable on the pyramid. 96 kilos to Red, who's only 70, and Condor's just able to pick him up and throw him down. Nobody gets past. Nobody gets past me! Well, they mightn't get past Condor, but Andrew certainly got past Vulcan and got 10 points. Red didn't score. In the next game, our challengers are going to barrel down this corridor to collide with Flame. Flame, can you take the heat? Bloody.
personal trainer for Body Express and a rapey instructor, and that's all I have time for. I'm single, I enjoy going down the beach, sunbathing, swimming, and in my spare time, I love partying with my Sydney friends. I like gladiators because I want a challenge, and I love the satisfaction of slamming one of those gladiators down. Our second game tonight is Gauntlet, and it requires our challengers to push through not one, but five gladiators. Their goal? To get to the other end. Gauntlet. Might sound easy, but if they want to get the maximum 10 points, they've got to get to the other end in less than 20 seconds. In the arena is our challenger, Tanya. And preparing to stop her in her tracks, our flame, Rebel, Cheetah, Blade and Delta. We're getting her. Well, Delta seemed real confident there. We're getting her with the words, ready. and let's see if they do. Gladiators, ready. The first of our Gordon runs about Three, to start. Two, one. Tanya at 70 kilos has got a big weight advantage over some of these gladiators. The only one she matches up with is Flame. And Flame's doing a great job to hold her up. She's passed her now up to Rebel. Rebel applying the brakes. A lot of time being wasted here. Remember, she's got to get through in 20 seconds to get the 10 points. Sheena's also doing her part. She's stopping Tanya from getting through. Time nearly run out. She's not even going to get five. Whistles blow. It's all over. It was a tough gauntlet run here for Tanya. She came up to Cheetah. Cheetah was in the middle of the gauntlet, so if she got past her, she might have stood a chance, but there was no way she was going to do it. Cheetah was determined to hold her back. Tanya, it was hard work. Unfortunately, it was too hard. You didn't gain any points. You didn't get to the other end. I couldn't believe how heavy they were. There's a bit of technique there, and I just didn't have the technique right, right in spinning, so... But I'm ready to try for the next event. <laughs> well, you like action-packed movies. Was that action-packed enough for you? Too much. <laughs> it was as if Tanya ran into three brick walls. Well, now it's Donna's turn. Can she smash through all five? Donna now takes off in the gauntlet run, meets Flame first up, and she pushes her down. We've talked about Tanya's weight advantage. Well, Donna's got the disadvantage. She's only 52 kilos. Donna now comes up to Rebel. Once again, Rebel holds her up. Trina backs up really well, brings Donna down. This is going to be a hard run also for Donna. Like a praying mantis with a broken leg, she's trying to just follow her away through. And, oh, no, she doesn't. Time's up. No point for either challenges. We spoke about the praying mantis with a broken leg. As she got up, maybe she was a bird with her wings clipped. She just couldn't get enough to get past these gladiators, and they're really strong tonight. It's going to be hard for all challenges. Donna, what an exhausting run. Unfortunately, no points, but you're not injured, are you? No, not at all. I think the first girl trod on my ankle, but it seems to be all right, so I was lucky, I think. <laughs> I thought I'd do better than that, but they made a pact, I think, and didn't let me through, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Well done, gladiators. No points scored in the gauntlet run for both our female challengers. Both Tanya and Don are still 0-0 after two games. I work as a maintenance manager. I train six days a week and I compete in triathlons. Days are full of exercise, like running, swimming and cycling. And when I've got a day off, I love a cold beer with my mates. I heard the ad on the radio. They were looking for challenges. So here I am, and come and get me. Waiting in the gauntlet is force. Cougar, Hammer, Condor, and the last line of defence, Tower. Three, two, one. Andrew takes off in his gauntlet run and force, forces him straight down to the ground first up. This is going to be a hard run for Andrew. These guys are immovable. Cougar now, stopping him there as he comes past him and up to Hammer. Hammer just playing around, he's past Hammer also. What can Condor do? Stopping him, maybe. No, he's thrown him away. Tower, as I said, the last line of defence. Pushing him over in 24 seconds. Andrew threw in the run of his life. Okay. Yeah! And he's a happy man. All 
also, and so he should be. He really tried to power his way through. Let's remember Andrew's at 80 kilos, and some of these guys weigh 10 or 15 kilos more without their uniform on. a little easier now. You've got five points, Andrew. You've got 24 seconds, one second under the time. Now, I was just a bit lucky there. I was going, when I hit force, I thought, oh, yeah, all <laughs> oh, the running games are going to start. But then Hammer come up yeah, and come right right through me. Then I look up and there's tower there, looking down at me. I go, how the hell am I going to get through here? It doesn't get any better. Oh, I just scrambled through the last second. It was good. <laughs> Apprentice Carpenter from Brisbane. I play a bit of golf. Oh, and I've got a worm farm. We're a bit of a sporting family. My mother's a champion golfer. My father played football. And my sister's in the show jumping. I'm a bit of a tough guy. I work out at home. I breed goldfish. And I use a hard side of my toothbrush. Why am I on gladiators? To win a bet. Challenger, ready! So he thinks he's a tough Gladiators. guy, does he? Well, these gladiators ready. are going to bring him down to size, I'm sure. Three, two. One. Red runs down the goal. That's great pass force. Up to Cougar. Cougar now stopping him, bringing him down. Can he get past him? Yes. He beats Hammer. Oh, look at Hammer throwing him around. Trying to cut him in half. He pushes him down again. Boys on top and gives him a slam to go with him. Up to Condor now. The world farmer trying to slide his way underneath Condor. Can he do it? Yes. He's now up the tower. Can Tower stop him? Oh. Just gets over by a finger. This was a really tough run for Rhett. He came straight past Force into Cougar. Cougar did well to try and hold him up. Once he got past him, he was up to Hammer. You've heard of a Hammer and Sickle? Well, this is Sick and Hammer. It was incredible. You were getting uh, pounded left, right and centre. I've got some news for you. You've been giving five points because Hammer held you up too long. Five points for the challenge. Wow, what a lucky break. Congratulations. I, I could see that Hammer was tossing up whether he's going to pick me up and drive me on my head, but uh, <laughs> thank Easy God. Easy five points. You might have been driven on your head, Andrew, but you also had your score driven up by five points. Red also earned five in the gauntlet. Andrew leads 15 to five after two games. Yeah. Next up, our contestants arm themselves for a duel against the Determined Storm. I've got attitude. You got a problem with that? Gladiators. I'm a personal trainer. I won an aerobic competition last year in New South Wales. I have a background in swimming, dance, gymnastics and hockey. I train three hours every day. Uh, the rest of the time I run my personal training business and whenever I get time I party. I was talked into going into the gladiators but now I'm in it, I'm going to give it my best shot. It's a stoush on top of the podiums. And what do you need? Weight, balance, and reach. And if you're lucky, Kimberly, and stay up there for 30 seconds, you'll get the maximum 10 points. Tanya is up there and is about to be torched by flame. Jewel, let's be frank. I like a good fight. Tanya, flame, in Jewel, both competitors must be seen to be attacking 
at all times. Failure to do so will result in disqualification. John Alexander laying down the laws for the start of the duel. And away we go. Can you and Flame? Now, Flame absolutely loves it on top of these platforms. She's actually made herself the queen of the castle. And she goes away and works away on Tanya. Tanya trying to fight back, nearly lost her stick. If she actually lets go of her stick, she'll be disqualified altogether. Flame not giving Tanya a chance to fight back. She's trying her hardest. I think it's just going to be a matter of survival now for Tanya. She's been warned again by Joe Alexander. And the time runs out. Tanya survived. Well done. Five points to her. Height and weight, pretty equal here. There's a real fine line between surviving and not attacking. This time I'd have to go with John Alexander. Tanya, a good fight. Let me tell you the good news. You just gained five points. Now, they were much needed points. You were on zero to start with. So, fantastic effort. You're a little bit puffed there. She's just so strong, but that was one of my better games, this one, because of my body strength. Does anything prepare you for that first blow? You get a bit dizzy when she hits you. It's just like, you don't know where you are for a minute, a couple of seconds, but then you're sort of back on track again and focus. Tanya's feet were certainly glued to that platform. Let's see if Donna will come unstuck against the sensational storm. And sensational she definitely is, Aaron, on top of these platforms. Challenger. We've seen in the previous Ready. weeks just how strong Storm is. Let's Ready. see if Donna can wear it. Ready. Hunga. Three, two, one. Both women a little bit hesitant here in the start of the duel. Storm just backing back, and now she comes forward and unleashes with a few big hits. Donna's actually defending herself to make up your own mind, folks. Is she attacking or is she just surviving? Well, surviving might be the name of the game here for Donna. As Storm lets go with a few big blows, and Donna doesn't like this at all. Oh, no, woman overboard throughout the life raft. That Storm was just too much for Donna to survive. And as you can see here, Storm just throws them from everywhere. She hits her in the back of the head. She hits her on the back. And Donna just didn't want to be there at all. She jumped ship, and she may have even hurt her ankle as she landed on the stick. Now, there's a medic and a doctor at all gladiator events. Storm's obviously concerned. Although the competition is fierce, there's a good camaraderie between gladiators and challengers. Now, it looks like Donna's ankle's pretty badly twisted. Hopefully, it's only a sprain. Let's hope she's OK to continue challenging the gladiators this evening. And at the end of Jewel, Tanya scored five. Donna, unfortunately, scored zero. And after three games, that's the way the score is. Five love after three. Challenger, ready. Let's see what the men can do ready on top of the dueling towers. Ready. Under. Taipan ready. versus Andrew. Two, one. Here we go. Andrew throws a big one first up. Taipan just trying to survive. Oh, the stick's down. Andrew actually fell on his stick there. Could have unbalanced Taipan. Yes, it did. Oh, well, did it, actually? I don't know. I reckon Taipan just came over and pushed Andrew off. Taipan's been disqualified. Andrew protested. And Taipan's not too happy. Let's have a look at this on the replay again. As we watch Taipan's stick go down now, Andrew did fall on the stick. Whether it unbalanced Taipan or not, or whether he just didn't like the heat. Oh, Taipan just stood over and Andrew went flying. I think he's actually uh, overbalanced and fell onto my platform by accident, but it's not a good way to get the points, but who cares? Ten points better off. I might lodge a protest uh, not being a bad sportsman or a sore loser, but uh, I had trouble lifting my stick up once I was down, so maybe his weight was on it, I don't know. The video clearly indicates Andrew falling on Taipan's stick, causing him to lose balance, therefore coming on the opponent's uh, podium. Therefore, we will replay the duel. OK. Take two of the men's duel coming up. Well, I reckon Taipan might have been a bit lucky there. As you see him climb the ladder, that's how the guys get up to the top of the platforms. And here we go. Three, two, one. We do it all over again. Andrew and Taipan in the duel. And Taipan really going for it this time. Oh, Andrew's sitting down on the job. He reckons it's that easy. Now he's praying for mercy. And you're not going to get any 
from Ty Bat and all Andrew. He's just unleashing left and right, and Andrew's gonna go. Yep, he does. Oh, Andrew, I would have just taken the 10 points and run in the first effort because this time you were absolutely slaughtered. As you were down there on the hands and knees, Ty Bat said goodbye, and that's exactly what happened. To the rematch, what's your state of mind, Andrew? Uh, very lucky, very lucky to get the rematch. But uh, oh, he had me down, he got a good hit on me, and I was on the ground, I couldn't do anything. Well, you certainly had the crowd on the edge of their seats. Taipan, justice prevails? Certainly, I was uh, pumped up for the second time, and a few big hits. He was down on his knees, but I still managed to get him off. Well, now it's Red's turn, and how is he going to handle Cougar? Well, that's a very good question, Aaron, because Cougar's 92 kilos, Red 70, you can nearly Ready. say it was the matchup of the big cat versus Ready. the kitten. Ready. She's lucky they stopped it there. Red was going to cut more. Let's watch it here. Cougar really unleashed with a few blows. He went down and swept his legs. That was the end of it for Red. He really lost balance from then on, lost his stick, and as a consequence, lost the match. After all that duelling, no points to either challenger. Overall scores, Andrew still leads Red 15 points to five. Rhett and Andrew are still with us, but only just. Coming up next is a game that will have them running in all directions and into the bulk of the mighty tower in Powerball. Well, it is me. I'd like to see that. Bloody. Both of tonight's winners will go home with this Sony Music System containing a 5-disc changer, 70 watts of power, remote control and this great selection of CDs from Sony Music. Well over $2,000 value. Runners-up in tonight's competition are still going to be big winners. They'll be able to tone up using this state-of-the-art gym equipment from Elite Fitness. Now, Donna should have been here to play Powerball tonight, but due to the serious fall that she took in Jewel, We'll need to confer with our Dr Peter. She's badly injured her ankle. Uh, we think it's only a sprain, but we've sent her away for x-rays just to confirm this. But she's not fit to continue tonight. OK, so obviously she won't be playing Powerball. John Alexander, what do we do about this situation? Well, the rules allow for reserve, and in this case, Cathy will take up where Donna left off. Meet Cathy Katsourakis. Cathy's from Victoria, she's a hairdresser and 29 years old. She's single and has won a silver medallion at volleyball. Good luck, Cathy. And now a game that requires you to get as many goals as you can while avoiding the gladiators. Powerball. You get two points for every ball in the outer baskets, three points for the central goal basket. Taking to the field of Powerball are our challengers, Cathy. And Tanya. And would you welcome into the arena our Powerball professionals, Rebel, Delta and Storm. Three, two, one. Start of the women's Powerball here and Kathy up for her first event gets two points early on. Great work, Kathy. She grabs another ball, tackled first up. Oh, boy, I reckon she wishes she was back in the audience. Remember, she was just picked out to replace Donna, who hurt her ankle. And 
And now she's copped another heavy tackle. Let's have a look at Tanya, who's brought down once more. 20 seconds to go. Can Tanya get any points on the board? No, not this time. Kathy loses the ball. She's run to the wrong end. Kathy, you've got to go to the other end to get your ball. There she goes now. Tanya grabs another two points. Maybe yes. Well, that's her first two points, I should say. Two each. Two more there to Kathy. That takes her to four. And time's run out. Let's go to the videotape and watch the replay. Tanya brought down with a big tackle there from our gladiator. And Kathy didn't get it her own way either. She actually didn't know where she was there. And she has to go to the other end to get the ball. John Alexander told her that. Kathy, I know you were nervous going into this game, but you have every reason to be proud of yourself because you just gained four points. <laughs> Fabulous effort. I know you were very nervous, weren't you? You've been thrown in the deep end. Really nervous, but all I thought of was Donna. She's a small girl with a big heart, and that was for her. Yeah, well done, Kathy. Four points from Powerball. Tanya received two. Tanya leads seven points to four, going into the Eliminator. Moving on to the playing mat, our men. Now, this is the last chance for them to score some vital points before the Eliminator. Please put your hands together for Rhett and Andrew. <laughs> and to stop them scoring, the trio of Tower, Hammer and Vulcan. Prepare yourself for action here. Hitman Hammer, Tower the Tackler and Vulcan the Vice are out for revenge. Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one. As Aaron said, this is the last opportunity for these guys to get some extra points. Hammer brought Andrew down first up there with a great tackle, and now he pushes away Rhett. Oh, boy, did you see that? Andrew came down, lost his helmet, ran right down. into Hammer. Let's have a look at it on replay. Rhett was running away there. He got brought down by Tower. And look at this, what a crunch. Falcon, Hammer and Andrew, bang! Call in the tow trucks. And we might even need the ambulance also, because Hammer's been hammered. Blood bin rule applies for Hammer. Well, if it was a Saturday afternoon, maybe. I reckon they might fix him up and we might get going again very shortly. Three. Yep, here's the count. One. And the restart of men's Powerball. Both men drop their ball, and away they go to another end to get a new one and see if they can get some score on the board. Volker with a big tackle, and Andrew's brought down there by Tower. Time running out for the guys as Red comes up to his end to get a red one. Andrew throws the blue one, misses. Red misses there also. I don't think these guys are going to score. As they come again, Andrew dies, and a big tackle there from Hammer brought him down, and time's run out. The final event before the Eliminator. Let's have a look at the replay. Andrew brought down with a big tackle there. Rick didn't get in his own way either. The Gladiators really stamped their authority. Quarterfinals next week, and they're getting themselves tuned up for some big competition. What a game of Powerball. They make you work for him, Red. Oh, mate, just too hard. Towers everywhere. I couldn't go around him, couldn't go over him, under him. Couldn't even get under the legs. Mate, I was trying to, I was trying to. Just palm me off. Andrew, they had you lined up. Well, I think so after that first tackle. Trying to get past Hammer. Nothing was intended. We just, it was just competitiveness, that's all. So our gladiators finish out on top at the end of the Powerball. Zero points to either competitor. Going into the Eliminator, Andrew leads Rhett 15 to 5. Coming up, the pace intensifies as our challengers turn the contest on each other for the final assault. Gladiators.
two lucky winners of the final will drive away in Hyundai's luxurious flagship, the Sonata Levant. With its 3-litre V6 engine, the Sonata has leather trim, cruise control, electric sunroof, power windows, central locking, ABS brakes and an airbag for added safety. Endurance is the name of the game. Conquering this torturous terrain will show us which one of our challenges has the tenacity and perseverance required to succeed. Eliminator. A giant obstacle course. That's the Eliminator. Tanya will start one and a half seconds ahead of Cathy. No gladiators, just one long obstacle course, Tanya, and 1.5 second lead. Is that enough? No, that's not enough, but I'm going to try my best, guys. We'll just see what happens. I'm just going to cruise along and just take one thing at a time. It's the only way to go. Cruising? Yeah, cruising. If you start to get nervous, <laughs> then you're stuffed up. Well, you've got, you've, you've got different speeds of cruising. What cruising are we talking about? You'll see at the end. <laughs> well, that is true. Tanya, good luck. Cathy, you. you're filling in for Donna, uh, that injury. You nervous? Um, well, Donna's going to be doing it with me, so we've got double the strength going over it. Come on, Kath! Tension must really be building up for Cathy. Not only has she got her own personal best to worry about, but she's got to worry about Donna, who was out with the ankle injury. Three, two, one. And here we go. Tanya sets off in the women's eliminator. Gets over the first turtle quite nicely. Here comes Cathy right behind her. Oh, Tanya's struggling to get over that third hurdle. She finally does. And this is nice and close. As they come up to the rope climb. Tanya on the left in the red. Kathy in the blue on the right. Kathy struggling a bit to get up that rope. Tanya's nearly up there now. She'll be on the monkey bars very shortly. Kathy still struggling to get up the top of that rope. Now she does. She's on the platform. And here's the monkey bars. Two at a time for Tanya. Kathy being very cautious on the outside, but catching up quite fast. As they're off the monkey bars, now onto the platform. Tanya's across the rolling logs. Very nicely. Oh, Kathy's gone. She's fallen off the edge of the rolling log. That'll sit her back a mile. As she tries to find her way to the rope ladder. She's a bit disoriented. She's found it now. Up she goes. And up goes Tanya. The cargo net not proving to be much of a hurdle for her. She's taking her time, just making sure that she does it properly. She's got time on her side. She's got a huge lead now over Kathy as she gets on the cargo net, and up she comes. Kathy making up a little bit of time. Tanya's up the top and comes to the flying fox. A good drop needed here for Tanya. Very important that she gets off this, OK? There she goes. Yes, nice drop there from Tanya as she goes to the balance beam. Let's have a look at Kathy. She's nearly up the top of the rope now. Oh, this is good competition. Tanya just taking her time in the balance beam. She really wants to win this one and go through to the quarterfinals. Off the balance beam. Travelator next. There she goes. Oh, struggling. She's made it, but here comes Kathy on the flying fox. And Tanya goes through at 157. A great effort by Tanya. As we await Kathy now to come off the balance beam and finish her eliminator. Oh, her legs have gone from under her. She could have hurt herself on the rolling long fall. Maybe we'll soon find out as she comes up the travelator. Inch by inch, step by step, can she get to the top? She's really trying her hardest here. Hold on, Kathy. Oh, no, she's gone down. Oh, we don't want to see that. Bad luck, Kathy. You put everything into this. Let's give it another shot, but I reckon she hurt her knee as she fell off the rolling log. As she tries again, gives it away. But I reckon she'll give it another shot. Stand up, Australia, and cheer this girl home. Because this is what we want to see. A competitor come from behind and finish at all costs. Fantastic work, Cathy. Tanya, great run. Did you think you'd make it? Yeah, I knew I really would. <laughs> so the one and a half seconds helped you? Oh, not really, Aaron. It was just positive thinking. And I'm just glad it's finished. <laughs> I just think that everyone that attempts this eliminator is a winner because it's very difficult <laughs> and tiring. Kat, you went in there with uh, two people in mind, yourself and Donna. A lot of people had a lot of faith in me, and I want to thank them. I wanted to just get through this. 
And I suppose I have. And you have. You've done very well. I'm sure Donna would be very proud of that effort. Thank you. Yes, what a great effort there by Kathy. And Donna's coming down to show her appreciation. Unfortunately, Donna and Kathy didn't win, but Tanya did. And if she's successful in the finals, she's off to London for the International Gladiator Challenge, courtesy of KLM, Royal Dutch Airlines. And four of our gladiators will tag along with her. And when she's there, she'll be able to call home on her Optus mobile phone. In the international series, Australia's best of the best will have the chance to perform on an international stage and show the world just what we're made of. It's a contest of Olympic standards and we know our champion athletes will carry the flag proudly and let's hope they come home covered in glory. Now, Andrew, are you feeling confident about this course? Oh, I'm confident, quietly confident. You know, five seconds isn't very much. I think this guy's a bit, a bit of a jackrabbit. What do you think, Brett? Can you take it? Uh, I think I can take it, mate. It's, you know, I've come this far. I'm not just going to pull the pin now, so I have to go hard. Andrew. Well, let's hope you pull the pin on the hand grenade, Brett, because you've got a big gap to make up here. Two, one. As Andrew takes off in the men's eliminator, folks, and expect this one to be quick. Andrew's very agile for his size, but this little whippet here, Rhett, he's going to catch up real fast. Andrew's up the top of the rope climb. Nice neat climb needed here for Rhett. And I think he's doing it. Yep, up he comes to the top of the platform. Andrew's just about finished the monkey bars. He's off rolling logs for him. Up he comes to the cargo net now. Andrew with a good little lead. But here comes Rhett from behind. Oh, look at this guy fly up the cargo net. You remember how it had been earlier on, how the pirate. Well, this guy leaves him for dead. He's up the top of the cargo net now and under the flying fox. Down he comes. Oh, he's lost his shoe. Look at that. He's kicked the other one off right there. This is going to be hard on the balance for Yep, he slipped. Andrew's got it all to himself now, you'd reckon. He goes across the balance beam, but look at Red fly. Oh, he's caught him. He's got the rope to go through. And what a great time. Oh, we love it's fantastic. I know, I'm sorry to do this to you, but you're going to have to talk to me. Hi, Mum. <laughs> How did you feel about it? It's the second time in life I've been so scared. First time was when I saw Jaws. <laughs> now, Andrew had a five-second start on you, and you caught him. You just scaled up that cargo net. I was so impressed. I just pretended he was my girlfriend. I was chasing him. <laughs> so I, well, it worked. I had a bit of trouble in the cargo net. He caught me like a cat up a top tin roof. But, uh, nah, congratulations, mate. Well, nah, it, Did it give you an adrenaline rush when you knew he was right behind you? Oh, very much so. But when he got to the beam and I saw him, fell off the beam, I thought, I thought I had a chance here. And then I... But halfway, I got the top of the travel aid and I tripped. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Let's relive this action once more. What a fantastic eliminator. We see Red come off the flying fox. He lost his shoe there, lost his other shoe. Attempting the balance B with no shoes is going to be hard because of the slipperiness. But frankly, my dears, he didn't give a damn. And Andrew, you thought you were hot. It's been a fantastic night of physical power, and we're sure glad that you've been a part of it. That's right, Kimberly. We've seen the sweat and the tears. So join us next week when our challengers take on the mighty... Warriors! If you enjoyed the games tonight and you want a piece of the Gladiator action yourselves, why not join the Gladiator fan club by writing to Post Office Box 710 Spit Junction, New South Wales or by calling 02 96 84 581. 